Good morning, everybody. Welcome. It is Tuesday, 26th of July. I've got to keep reminding myself of that. Um, it is still pretty cold in Joburg. Uh, Lyle joins me on the line, who's been in excellent form. In fact, the whole Clocking the Gallup team have been in remarkable form. But I suppose, Lyle, we have to doff our hat to the ghost rider, who has been, sure, unbelievable. On two tough uh, Durban cards, he's tipped eight winners, eight outright winners in two days. And, yeah, and those, those Grebel cards haven't been easy, so well, well done to him. Scottsville and Grebel, very difficult the last few days. Top tip. Yeah, and uh, I must say that we're on a hat-trick as well as far as my uh, soccershop.pet uh, selections mm. are concerned. So we've got Singspiel, which he also tipped first, uh, the Ghost Rider, on Sunday. That one uh, price boosted to 10 to 1. And then our winner yesterday, 11 to 2. Uh, price boosted and, and won. So we like today's card, though. Before I get started with Lyle, um, let's quickly remind folks of uh, our special that's coming up, the um, July, no, I would say the July special, the Gold Cup special. Just want to share that. Uh, you can see that, can you, uh, Lyle? Yes, perfectly. Okay, let me just make it a bit bigger. Uh, clocking the Gallup Extra, I won't spend much time on it, but, well, the figures and the form read for themselves i mean we are in unbelievable form at the moment i just hope it continues all the way through to the gold cup um it's our final promotion for the season a normal price of 250 rand and you get the best selections from the full team so i'm sure lyle will chip in i'll chip in nico will definitely chip in nino has a fair view meeting that he's got to obviously take care of and then the ghost rider well we'll be asking him to give his opinion Ooh. on everything because uh, he is in excellent form. So that's the Clocking the Gallop Extra. I've got uh, just the details quickly to show you, and uh, they should come up now. Let's share that. And there's nothing to show here. That's not very good. What happened there? Uh, stop Ooh. sharing. Let's find out where that's gone. Um, so, yeah, let's find out what happened here. I'm not too sure uh, why it suddenly disappeared. So... Um, let me just quickly pause and get that sorted. Oh, it's back on this one, is it? Stop sharing. Let's uh, oh, yeah. let's see. Can I go left or right here? No. Okay. Uh, in which case, then, give me two seconds. Okay, we should be back on, and hopefully I've got the right slide now um, to, to share. Right, there we go. Um, sorry about that, uh, everybody. We found the slide. Oh, yeah. So... Uh, as is normally the case, the four days of tipping, um, so it'll start on Friday, the 29th of July. That's this Friday. Uh, Saturday itself is Gold Cup Day. It's an unbelievable card. Uh, Sunday, I see, is going to be my baby because it's the 31st of July at Kenilworth. Actually, I've got a horse running there. I, I did it my way. I hope it's not three to ten and runs fourth. <laughs> yeah, I hope, uh, I hope not, Neil. Sure. We're still... Uh, uh, disappointing. I know you, you're upset about that one. It was very disappointing. Uh, you know, we've been in racing long enough, but uh, the form certainly didn't work out. Um, but uh, punters yeah. don't need to be told that. They, they found out the hard way. Anyway, uh, we'll dissect that yeah. at some stage. Uh, Cowboys don't cry, as they say. Sunday, the 31st of July, Kenilworth then, so that's me. And then Monday will be, once again, uh, Nino, but I'm sure he'll be also consulting, as I've mentioned, with the... Ghost Riders to eight winners in two days, outright winners. Uh, the 250 Rand is confirmed. There's the email. Now, this is important because we've had people in the past who have paid their money and then Nico can't get them the selections on each of the days because they didn't send their details through. So um, just contact us on clockingthegallop at gmail.com or on that WhatsApp number 79 specifying your name and critically your preferred mode of communication because once you've paid your 250 we want to get you those numbers every day for all four days there is the clock in the gallop fnb account number it's been up on the screen for a while so i'm sure you've got it uh clocking the gallop extra it's the last one for the season and the way things are building up uh we hope for a big one so that's uh, the play of your weekend with clocking the gallop Right, let's get back to the business at hand, Lyle. I know you've got to get out to the Vaal today. Race one yep. is a work riders. What do you think? Okay, well, you don't like work riders. I actually do. I had another chat with James Marie this last week, and uh, we're still sitting at 50% uh, plus favorites winning, Neil. So they, they generally behave themselves. And in race one, I make it a bit of a match race here between uh, number eight, Skyfall, Thomas in Kume. He chases a 16th winner for Farney Bronkhorst, as you and I were chatting off air. Very much in form. 
yes, uh, she's up in, in distance here this afternoon, but certainly the most consistent horse in the race. And she'll have to beat number one, Color Coded, with uh, the very talented Joe Gwinguiza aboard, Candace Dawson. I went and had a look at the form lines. They really are not strong. So, um, sure, one and eight to fight it out. And then the value bet, number seven, Eurodice, uh, with Sam Osea, Sam Osea uh, Paul Peter. Sam Osea has been in very good form. We don't need to talk about Paul Peter. And I think this is going to be the improver. But eight from one, and then seven and six to follow them home, Neil. Okay. Eight, one, seven, six for Lyle. I'm all over the seven, Eurodice, only because it's Sam Osea, and it's Paul Peter, yeah. and it's Suzette for you. And Suzette, uh, horses that have uh, run with Paul recently have just all trotted up um, and it's a Rafif. So I'm all over the seven in the first race, but uh, let's I move on to race. Bipod, I think hmm. bipod, uh, with a bop, I'll just go one, seven and eight and you'll double up. Yeah. One, seven. I agree. One, seven and eight. Let's move on to race two. This is a maiden juvenile plate for Phillies. A couple of first timers here, a couple of uh, unexposed sorts. What do you think? Um, I, I think the well, if you the betting wise the, the one time to flower was the favourite. I think this is the right one. Cabello Matignani for Brett Crawford, nice local debut in second by in Tayuba. The form lines on the Cape way stronger than anything else in the field here. So it was also back quite heavily on debut. Went to about fifteen to ten on local debut, I should say. Tops of speed rating and I think time a uh, time to flower is the right one. And I'd be confident of banking than the PA. But as you say, that two year olds new. We always chat about that number five Jinquin. Um, Lucky Larkus did say, expecting a nice uh, a nice run here. He was quite surprised on debut. Was only two lengths behind my first selection, number number one. And then um, the sixth horse, which is Madame Vicky, much improved second behind Ari Lina. JP van der Merwe rides uh, for the Alec Led stable. And then a horse like number eight, Queen of Smoke, I thought could be an improver. Queen of Smoke, that form line, time for Orchids, Neil, very strong. And the mayor of uh, Queen of Smoke was Quinta, who you'll know, Stanley Ferreira. Yes. Was, uh, a decent, yeah, decent five-time winner. So I'm expecting a better run from eight. But so there's two ways for me on form number one, but the improvers five, six, and eight. That's how I read the race. Okay, there we go. I've got nothing to add there. I just was showing the viewers the the betting here. There had to be money for Madame Vicky. Uh, quite a lot of it. Alec Laird, um, JP Funameva teaming up. Uh, on that daughter of master of my fate. That looks like the one the market wants to hear about as the garage door opens. Oh, the thrilling sounds of the garage door opening. Um, got it all going on in the background here. Uh, but better than four children, so they're at school, um, yeah, which I don't have to true. tell you about. Yeah, we know. Same, yeah. same. <laughs> um, okay, let's move on to race three, shall we, and have a look at uh, betting for the third race. Uh, while you do that, long, uh, Lyle, off you go. Uh, money for Texas Red. What did you think here? Well, lucky, uh, a lot lucky. Um, Andrew Fortune heard his comments about number 10, Texas Red. He said, whoever beats this horse wins. So he was very confident about the son of the United States after that pleasing debut. The mayor won three times over 1,400. Ryan Munger rides here for the Fortune stable. So a lot of confidence from the stable. But I did think that number four, Love Me Again, would give uh, him a go. Gavin Darina for Paul Peter, two decent efforts. And although was half a length behind number 10, Texas Red, who was notably on debut, is half a kilogram better off and also had that good first run. So, again, I thought a bit of a match race here between those two. And then number nine, Tartarus to follow them home with number one, I Am Giant. We're going to watch the betting on the son of Kawari, the mayor one over 1160. So a bit of speed there as well. Mm -hmm. um, Lucky did comment about number two, King of Rome. He said, quartet chance. Not a good field, Lucky's words, not a good field here. So a quartet chance on debut. But um, sure, Andrew was so confident that I might uh, lean towards a 10 Texas Red from the four, love me again. I thought those were the two to fight it up. Yeah. Okay, that's race three. Let's move on to race four and uh, have a look at the betting for the fourth race. Uh, there's a scratching here in the form of number 13 that comes out of race four. Uh, number 13, we didn't, I don't think, have much form anyway. It's so cold, I can't even turn the computer form pages. Well, actually, 13 <laughs> had a bit of form, so it might have improved, um, yeah, but it uh, it's not running. And Francois Herald rides number 17, which is a look to the stars. That's 50 to 1 anyway. Money here for number 12, Misty Cliffs, uh, the Roy Magna runner, with Caden Brewer on board. But to me, um, it looked like an interesting race. I thought they're 
there was some wiggle room here. Uh, obviously, number one, I'm in love sets the standard, but what did you think? Yeah, again, I think there's some wiggle room here. First leg of the jackpot, not the easiest. Um, starting off with Mystic Clips, when I, when I actually studied the form and I saw the horses 8-1, to one, I was quite surprised. Um, mm. Caden Brewer for Roy Magna, that uh, third behind gobsmacked. Toyubas come through and won. We'll see the Toyuba form line earlier in the day. Uh, there have been three winners from the Captain Pig form line, three winners from the Give Me a Shot form line. Caden Brewer taking the one and a half off. I think Mystic Cliffs is a runner. But the same can be said about number one, I'm in love, the favourite. Craig Zaki for Paul Peter. Paul Peter's comments, he said, working well. He has said that about all his horses today, though. Uh, back from 178-day rest and, again, nice Cape form lines, Neil. So if this, we know how Paul Peter's, um, his, his horses that are making local debuts here are absolutely flying. So I do think I'm the love is the right one. Um, number 15, Spirit Princess could be a bit of value. Brian Yower for the Azzy team. The mayor was quite useful as well, Sylvan Spirit. And then a horse like number three, Silk Garden, who was very close the first two. And even the nine at 14 to one was only half a length behind number five, Luna Billard, in that last run. So, yeah, Neil, I agree with you. It's a tricky race. If I had to stick my neck out, I would go with the one because of the form lines and the, and the stable. But I thought Misty Cliffs, um, even I haven't even mentioned number 11 yet, uh, for the class and stable. I'm going to go a few in the first leg of the jackpot, Neil. Okay, first leg, potential uh, roughies. Um, if number one, I'm in love, and the money horse number 12, Mr. Cliffs, do fluff their lines, then it has an open look around about it, yeah. which uh, yeah. Lyle has, has mentioned. Okay, let's move on to race five, which is a race that perhaps we can hold a bit shorter. Uh, Master of Coin clearly is... Um, if it was a normal maiden, I suspect it might be one to three, but it's not. It's a maiden handicap. And uh, Lyle and I have discussed this already. We both feel that, you know, number three flag bearer, because it's a maiden handicap, gets five kilograms. And that's going to make him pretty competitive. So one and three, three and one for us. Yeah, that, I mean, you've just summed it up there. I mean, three from one, one and three. Uh, yeah, it's, it's a match race, Neil, on form. Five kilograms is a lot to receive over 2,000 meters. Master of Coin arrived here with some nice form lines. In fact, 7, 12, 15, 16, 17 winners have come out of his last four form lines, um, whereas uh, Flag Bearer isn't as strong. But five kilograms, Gavin Arena, three from one, one from three. You hit the nail on the head, Neil. With nothing else to add there. I don't think anything else can win. Okay, I was just muting myself because now I've got some garage delivery arriving. Not for me, but for <laughs> someone's building a house next door to me. It's uh, yeah. it's all happening here. It sounds like a Noddy's oh. uh, big city environment. <laughs> um, okay, so let's move on to uh, the next race, shall we? And um, let me sh go back to sharing that screen um, and uh, doing some uh, fast moving on to the next race. So, yeah, we're lying and I in agreement there. Uh, if you play the jackpot one or the jackpot two, and there will be on that subject a take a bet with tab uh, video going out a little bit later on. So take cognizance of that. And there'll definitely be, by the way, a price booster because we're on a hat trick of those. As I mentioned, 10 to one winner, 11 to two winner. We'll see if we get a third. But I'm going to pick Lyle's brains about that off air. Let's move on to race six, 96 handicap. Um, yeah, small field, but um, what did you make of it? It looked pretty competitive to me. Mm, I actually studied this, this this particular race nice and hard, Neil. I've mm. ended up going narrowly with number two role with the punches, Roy Magnet, Gavin Arena, because of that win last time. I mean, Val de Orsia came through and won a group two next time, and mm. roll with the punches beat it. So, although he's up six points, carrying 59 and a half kilograms, he loves the course and distance, and he's in fine form. But some weight issues here. Number eight, Spanish boy, hasn't won for 698 days, but maybe today will be the day. He's well in here. Mm. Uh, he has won over course and distance. And look at his last two efforts, not striding, not striding. He managed to run under two lengths beyond Godswood. Um, he, if he gets it right, I mean, lucky you, Larkas, his words, this is an enigma to him, this horse. He doesn't know what to do. But Spanish boy could easily win a race like this. Goliath Heron is well in here. If you took Blake, look at the weight turnarounds. He's got weight turnarounds with the whole field. So yeah. Goliath Heron, Pierce Rodham, big runner. And then I also would not leave out, it's about time. Those last two runs, really, really good for Paul Peter. Enters its uh, colors here with, with um, Anthony Peter. So good race, Neil, actually. I've mentioned those, those four horses. I think all four can win. But I think um, eight and six could be valued. 
Yeah, I see it the same way. I mean, roll the punch with the punches. I've got to respect that you're right. He's been slapped with that weight. So if you have a look at his that run behind uh, when he beat Val Dorsia, uh, Goliath Heron is mm. three and a half kilograms better off with him for a two and a half length beating. Right. So theoretically, uh, Goliath Heron should finish a, a, a kilogram, uh, sorry, a length clear of him. But that never happens like that because roll with the no. punches is pretty quick. So he'll be on his bicycle early. But I like the booking of Pierre Stratum. Yeah, I'm with you. I think it's very competitive. Uh, Number four is about time. He's an oratorio. I, I think you know. I bought an oratorio, really nice oratorio at the sales. I think he's an underrated stallion, yeah. and uh, and you get them for value for money. So I hope he runs well for uh, our own syndicate with the oratorios. But yeah, beyond roll with the punches, it does get uh, trappy. Um, yeah, it does. Spanish boy is a little bit. I don't want to be disrespectful to him or to the other ones that I'm going to compare him to, but he's a little bit. Like what's that, Michael? As yours that hasn't run for hasn't won for seven hundred and sixty eight days. Uh, um, uh, Java, Java, yeah. something. Java something. house. Java, Java house. house. I mean, mm. and credit credit to the owners because um, they've stuck faith with their horses and they are consistent, but they just can't get the win. So you know, Spanish boy, yeah. six hundred and ninety eight days. That's coming up to yeah. two years. But maybe and, today's uh, but the day. More the more, the more and more I went in circles here, for instance, It's About Time has been beaten and held by Goliath if you go back to mm -hmm. the 9th of April, and Goliath is theoretically held just slightly at the weights by Spanish Boy. So to me, Spanish Boy actually is the right horse here, but mm -hmm. like you said, and I'll use Lucky's exact words. He says Spanish Boy is becoming old and grumpy. Exact <laughs> words from Lucky. Yeah, he didn't compare it to himself, did he, Lucky? He did. He did actually. Yeah, Andrew Bond made Andrew Bond made sure that uh, Lucky was included in that. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. No. No. Well, I hope for the best for them. Um, I think the booking of Cabela Matsuyama might be a uh, a stroke of genius. Cabela's riding well, yeah. so I think uh, maybe the change of rider will help him. Yeah. I certainly wouldn't yeah. leave him out, Spanish boy, for sure. Okay. Yeah, let's uh, move on to race seven. We dwelled a bit on that. The next two races are pretty competitive. Um, but we're back with the Paul Peter Suzette Fouillon Gavin Lorena combination here on number one cabinet shuffle, who brings him for Zoon in a towel form. But uh, as you mentioned earlier on, um, these horses, first time up for, for Paul Peter, have done very well. And cabinet shuffle might well fit the bill again. Yeah, geez, Paul Peter gets them to improve length. So, yeah, obviously a big danger here. But like you said, Neil, I think this is very open. To me, Jet Cat is a big runner here. Diego de Gavea for Heinrich van der Vestazen. Uh, his last merit rating was off a 72. He's now a 71. He's knocking loudly. He's half a kilogram better off with Midnight Badger. Um, he was just in front of number 10. Who's that star on that double secret form line? He's five and a half kilograms better off with front frontline fighter. If you go back five runs. So at the weights, this is like my, uh, uh, my Spanish boy. At the weights, Jet Cat's the right one. But who's, who's that star? Samanga Kamala for Clinton Binder. Merit rating in a good spot here. Samanga retains and beat a few last time. There are mm. a few behind him. He too, he's five kilograms better for another thief. If you go back five runs, he's pretty well in here. Obviously, Cabinet Shuffle has to be taken very seriously, as is the case with number three, Frontline Fighter. Um, that last winner, Frontline Fighter, he won in 69.48. And they've been good winners from there. So... Sure, Neil. This I can go on, but I'll stop there. For me, it's um, 13, 10, 1, and 3. I could probably name another 4. Yeah, very competitive. I agree with you. Um, who's that star? I quite liked him on form. And then, like you, I spent a bit of time looking at the handicap and thought, gee whiz, he's been chucked in here. Uh, there's one yeah. particular form line where I couldn't believe how well he, in he is. Uh, maybe it's that last... Was it, in fact, the last... It's the run yeah. on the 12th of July where... Yeah, he's, um, he beat a few. Yeah, beat a few, and uh, Midnight Badger meets mm. him on the same terms. I mean, he can't, Correct. you know, he can't roll that over, and neither could Edgar Town or Admiral T. Arch, although there might be a little bit of improvement in those. Now, I agree with you. I thought, who's that star? Got uh, away with a bit of uh, murder there last time, but he'll have to capitalise to make, uh, make it. The thing is about him, I think he might be at his best over 1,000, and this is the uh, 1,200, yes. so... Very, very trappy yeah. little race. Um, trappy so race. First choice, trappy, trappy. the old campaign of Jet Cat. Um, yeah, I think you've yeah. got to go fairly wide there. Uh, really? Just one quick one I wanted to ask you. Moya Wala Liga, did you give that any kind of chance? 
Um, it, it is in my list, and I would not be leaving it out of the jackpot if we go to the mm. front line fighter form line, three kilograms better off for two lengths. So if you like front line fighter, Moya wa La Liga has to be in here too. One mm. of those races, Neil, merit rating come down to. Yeah. Okay, right. Mm, uh, let's, uh, oh, um, I don't know, I pressed the wrong button now. See, I shouldn't have done Again. that. Uh, yeah, I Again. pressed the wrong button. Let me just get out of back here. Uh, remaining time, stop share. Okay, let me just stop share and get out of that. I don't know what I've done. Um, <laughs> right, as long as we're still recording, uh, which we are. Um, okay, let's move on to race eight. And um, yeah, sure, it doesn't get any easier in the last. Well, I don't think it gets any no. easier. Although having said that, number nine, break point. There's been money for break point, and it was an excellent debut, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, it certainly was, but I don't think this is a one-way race by any means, Neil. Mm. Um, you and I actually chatted just briefly before we started, and you told me your value bets, and I nearly fell over. We'll, we'll come to that now. Um, number one, big five. Samaga Kamala for the Rue Stable. Yes, he's having his 16th run. Yes, he's exposed. But three good course and distance runs, and I like his last two. I think big five with Samanga Kamala is a massive runner here in the last race to finally get it right. Obviously, number nine, break point. Um, very good debut. Home of the Braves come through to win. Gavin Lorena is riding exceptionally well the last month or so. And David Neva Hazen's horse. And then over the page, oh, not over the page, not twice. And um, this was 10 to 1. You know, I'm not sure what it is now, but uh, that last one was a nice improved effort. St. Quinton's come through in one. I just never look at that. Number three is still, oh no, wrong race. We need to go to eight. Just want to see what number three is. Not twice. 20 to 1, Neil. Yeah. That's 20 to 1, Neil. One. Yeah, I like that. And then um, number 12, give me a diamond. I also thought it could be a player here. 1,400 meters, tongue tower, nicely drawn. Pelisandi and Poli had a nice win yesterday in one of the rides there. Mm. Yeah, so as you said, difficult race. I'm, I'm probably going to lean a little bit towards number one, big five, and then my value bet number three, knock twice, Neil. Okay, yes. I see the money is poured on number nine, break point. He is a two-year-old. Um, these are is one of these races where there's two year olds, three year olds, and a, a few four year olds. Number five, never too clever, is a four year old. He's uh, been knocking at the door. He's having his eleventh start. I see the blinkers are back on, but he'll have to pick up his feet. I think uh, he's kind of in his place. Um, yeah, and beyond that, I think it's fairly open. Um, you mentioned number twelve. Give me a diamond, didn't you? I think you did. Um, yes, I think it's a runner. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Uh, there's yeah, been a touch of support for that. Okay, yeah, the last uh, race uh, beyond those, the form runners, um, definitely, as you mentioned, number one has been knocking on the door, big five. I backed him actually at his penultimate start at 25 to one. And he wow, very yeah. nearly beat Parker Getrix, but I didn't he go did. for him last time, but he held his form. So he, uh, he should uh, be there about. I think, okay, I think well, it's, that's... It's not... mm -hmm. Obviously, Neil, nine is the favourite and obviously the horse to beat you. But if nine doesn't win, I think big five, knock twice, and then 12, give me a diamond of big runners here. So it all it's all going to revolve around number nine break points. And I will speak to David Nieberhaisen when I'm out there at the vault. OK, well, dress up warmly because it's blinking cold. Um, no, I'm not like you. I'm not like you, Nicker. I don't feel the cold, Neil. Don't you? Sure. No. Well, you, well, you're braver than me. That's for sure. Uh, Laurel, I'm going to let you go. I know you've got to drive out there. Thank Thanks you. for your hard work. Thank you, Neil. And, um, yeah, your best of the day then. Uh, I'm actually thinking that between you and I, we might actually fancy a uh, flag bearer because that five kilograms he gets from Master of Coin is, is quite significant, isn't it? Makes him a big runner. I'm just going back to the earlier race. It's certainly a big runner. Um, so the best of the day... Yeah, they were probably they were probably would be our best of the day because we we made a lot of the races match races and that's mm. no exception. But yeah, five kilograms is a lot over two thousand meters. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll shop around for the right value. I think and see if we can yeah. make it three from three as far as the price booster is concerned. But Lyle, thanks very much. Thank you so much, Neil.